Hello everyone, I am Somindi. Today, it is my pleasure to present our paper, Anomalous Pattern Recognition in Vital Health Signals by a Multimodal Fusion. Vital health signals are very critical for the evaluation of one's physical health condition. It is presented via body pulse, electrocardiogram, PPG, body temperature signals. However, we do not get to evaluate these signals unless visiting a doctor. Our model gives you the opportunity to check such important bodily information from the comfort of home. As such, monitoring these vital body signals has rapidly emerged as a popular alternative in the recent decade. However, most current methods and devices, such as smartwatches and Fitbits, are wearable. This results in problems like skin-related issues. Therefore, many seniors are hesitant to use these products regularly. However, other proposed solutions are either invasive, obtrusive, or proposed posture-specific sensors and furniture. These methods are also noise-sensitive and have instances of missing information which significantly impacts performance. These models, the current models, are also often environment-specific. In contrast, we propose a generic, noise-resistant, signal processing and anomaly detection framework that may be deployed in both obtrusive and unobtrusive environments to measure and analyze vital signals of humans in real time. The general architecture of our system has a few units. At the first stage, we collect the patient's vital signals. The data collection unit is comprised of three modules. First, the noise filtering in which the signal is cleaned. This is followed by other signal processing steps, like segmentation, feature extraction, etc. Only then is the resulting signal ready for further analytical tasks. In this entire workflow, the challenges are manifold. The first set of challenges in this problem scenario lies in gaining access to the accurate data free from noise. As too much noise can affect the system performance, regardless of the capacity of the analytical module. Towards this, we propose an unconstrained sensing technique, which is unobtrusive and continuous in nature. The second set of challenges in this problem scenario lies in developing an analytical module that is generic and not very system specific. We propose a generic machine learning based anomaly recognition framework to solve this problem. Finally, our method is multimodal, generic, and noise robust in nature. We have a generic machine learning based module which can handle both multimodal and unimodal signal inputs. A robust peak detection module is proposed to fuse peaks from both the time and substrate domain. This peak fusion step is crucial to obtain a discriminated feature representation from a signal in the presence of mass. We propose a deep learning based monitoring process. Note that in this continual learning process, we can predict personalized individual health patterns. We have also developed a prototype named Smart Chip. We developed this prototype to perform the experiment in a real life scenario where we try to estimate the human participant's health condition 
in real time. Participants in our study had a wide range of ages, health conditions, and seat positions. Our system demonstrates an improved performance in both the publicly available datasets as well as our in-house lab experimental settings based data. We leverage multiple sensing modalities to capture the vital body signals in an unobtrusive manner. This provides a generic anomaly recognition module. Here, we describe the smart chair prototype. As can be seen, signals are taken from various parts of the body. From the hands are taken wrist pulse and temperature, femoral pulse from the thigh area, and ECG from the back. These sensors can be rearranged in position. The signals from these sensors are then transferred into the computer where it goes through extensive processing. It is important to reduce the impact of high frequency values as they contribute to the noisy part of the signal maximum. For noise filter, we use the butterboard filter to separate the high frequency noise from the signal. By this, the impact of the higher frequencies is reduced by a significant factor. We use a cutoff of 2.5 hertz and n equal to 5, which is the order of the butterfly filter, which, can, which controls the sharpness of the transition from stop band to pass band. From the filtered signal, we compute a moving average based on a one sided window. Any heart rate lying above this threshold is considered a peak. We convert our filtered signal into the substrate domain and follow it up with granular level peak analysis. Important to note that to prevent the duplication of peaks, we only choose one prominent peak within a close binding window. We fuse the peaks obtained from the sexual domain and peaks obtained from the tie in domain to obtain an exhaustive set of peaks. From the fused peak list, we derive RRSD. RMSSD, BPM, IBI, SDNN, SDSD, NN20, NN50, PNN20, and PNN50 features. These features represent the incoming signal in terms of a compact feature descriptor. These feature attributes are combined to have a more complete representation of the original signal. This representation is used as an input to the following deep learning model. The deep, the deep neural network model has three fully connected layers with rectified linear unit activation functions. The activation of the last fully connected layer is fed into a soft match layer to obtain the probabilistic category membership scores for the incoming signals and mini score. We use the standard back propagation algorithm to update the fully connected layer with parameters. I'm skipping over the mathematical details due to the time constraint. Here is the evaluation part. To evaluate our model, we have used two different metrics, one for the peak detection module, and secondly, for the prediction performance evaluation 
but the anomalous pattern cluster. The data set used were the Oregon Health and Science University data set, consisting of 28 participants using the signals. However, we have only used health signals from 26 participants as the remaining two participants had ECG signal data missing at several time instances. The Mendeley dataset had eight classes. The classes were ventricular vitamin, ventricular trigeminy, supraventricular tachyarrhythmia, arterial fibrillation, left bundle branch block beat, arterial premature beat, premature ventricular contraction, and the healthy class. To prepare the in-house dataset, we had collected the synchronized femoral pulse, wrist pulse, and ECG signals of participants. We have used 13 participants, four high school students, six healthy functioning adults, and three senior adults who have gone through heart surgeries in the past. We have used seven different sitting positions in a chair for 30 seconds each. The tests include two scenarios. One, heart rate at a calm state, and secondly, excited state after 30 minutes of exercise. The peak detection accuracy formula is shown here. We have used it as one minus P over G over G, where G is the number of hand-picked peaks by an independent evaluator, and P is the number of system identified peaks. We have also used receiver operating characteristics curve, ROC curve, as well as classification accuracy score and sensitivity score. The performance of the proposed prediction module on the OSHU ECG data set is shown here. The two prediction modules compared are the normal peak detection module and peak detection after using such analysis. The peak detection after using such analysis is significantly better than the peak detection using normal peak detection. Now, we show the performance of the proposed prediction module on the collected in-house dataset of 13 participants. We can see the accuracy scores of after exercise accuracy and calm accuracy. Here, we report the performance of the proposed prediction module on the Mendeley dataset with eight classes as described before. We can see the ROC curves on one side and classification accuracy bar graphs on the other. Finally, we have compared our paper's performance to that of other previous works. We boast a 3% increased sensitivity score using all 17 classes. And using only eight classes, we boost a performance gain of 2.5%. Finally, we have built a framework that is able to accurately classify multiple input signals like ECG, PPG, and femoral pulse from a specific individual to two categories, healthy and unhealthy. We have proposed a continual monitoring facility, which can have several life changing agents, including the ability to identify pathology conditions before they turn into a serious threat. We have also built a generic prototype, which is sufficiently generic to be deployed into other frequently used furniture items pets, sofas, and much more. However, our work does have one limitation. 
too much movement by the seat occupant can generate too noisy data, which makes the classification task a tad bit more challenging. Thank you very much. See you at the conference. Ta-ta.